I'm just at home today doing a bit of a car clean up and pull apart. In a couple of weeks over Christmas we're heading away, heading away for three weeks to the Victorian high country and the Great Ocean Road. So I want to pull everything out of my car, check what I got, see what I need, make sure everything's ready to go. I thought I'd just do a video about everything I keep inside my car for when I go away in relation to tools, spare parts, um, navigation, communications, recovery gear, all those sorts of different things. This isn't a everything you should keep in your car video or the best things to keep in your car because I'm not an expert. This is just what I personally keep in my car and may give you some ideas or you might be able to give me some ideas as well of some important things I can take with me. At the end of the day, I'm not taking a semi-trailer out the bush. You are limited on weight and space. So you try and pick those important things to take with you. So I'll just go through what I have in my car. Keep in mind, this isn't a perfect list or the best of everything. This is just what I've personally gathered over the last couple of years and what I'm still adding to constantly as well. We'll start in the front and work our way backwards. We'll start here in the front passenger. All right, first thing is glove box. I've got in here matches. Personal locating beacon, I keep that there ready to go. That's a, that's a big one. That's a GPS personal locating beacon. Basically anywhere you are, you can hit the emergency button and it will go through to a rescue team. They have my details and they can send help in an emergency. The only thing it has but is an emergency use button, so they don't know what's wrong or what's happened. Just a service book, torch, nothing too much in there. Under the passenger seat, first aid kit. I probably need to buy a bit of a bigger, better one, but this one's not too bad. Uh, I've added a few extra things, so I've added like some extra Nurofen, Panadol, a thermometer, a couple of antiseptics, fire extinguisher, both of these close by in case you need them quickly. I probably need to get this mounted properly somehow, but I haven't done that yet. But it just sits in the box, it's only quick open. And then the fire extinguisher is there. Then in the center console, main thing, just a couple of chargers. Main thing is my winch remote with the Bluetooth to go with it. Then other than that, I just got earplugs, a couple of pens. Nothing too much. In the driver's side in the front, I keep a bit of stuff under the seat. First thing is to change a tire, tire levers, and for the wheel nuts in there. That's just your standard one that comes with the car. I keep a toolkit in there. I have another one in the back, but this is just a heap of stuff I keep under my seat. And what else have I got there? Hacksaw, your shifter, tape, zip ties, and big hammer. I'll start laying all this stuff out on this mat here so we can get a better look at it. Alright, that's everything there from the front. Tools I have, hacksaw, shifter, big hammer, tape, zip ties, more zip ties, and just a heap of different stuff here. Multi grips, screwdrivers, circlip pliers, small screwdriver, socket, another shifter, super glue, a couple of knives, spare hacksaw blades. Alright, we'll go through to the back now. I have a couple of these seat organizers behind both seats. Bug spray, not even much in this one at the moment. Binoculars, there's a heap of spare batteries in this one, AA and AAA batteries. Just some gloves for Kai. And that's to charge our, there's a feather there. That's to charge our handheld radios. All right, over the other side behind my seat, a heap of head torches. There's three different head torches hanging over the back seat. That's a good place because they're nice and easy to quick to grab. I got two GME, two watt radios, ARB um, tire pressure checker. Got some sunscreens in here, a couple of sets of gloves, tire deflator, the quick release one that pulls the valve core out. That's what I always use normally to let the tires down. That's just if I want to quickly check their pressures. And then I got the VMS, the off road GPS. I get asked a heap about this VMS whether I'm happy with it, whether I like it. Generally, I am pretty happy with it. I think it's good for its price. 
People normally say the HEMA is better. I haven't used the HEMA off-road GPS before, but for this, I don't really use all the functions on it. The main thing I use it for is I just have it plugged in and then a constant location of where we are. So I'll just give GPS location of where we are, what track we're on, and then all the tracks that are around. So if I wanna go somewhere, I can sort of zoom around on the map. It has 99.5% of the tracks on it. I can zoom around, see where I wanna go, and then pick a route. Um, other than that, I'm just using bigger paper maps. I always take paper maps for like a big overview of the area because you can't really plan a trip off this. This is more for the close, in the moment stuff. Another thing for communications is my phone, which seems like an obvious one, but one tip is I am with Telstra. I was with Optus before, but Optus reception is hopeless out the bush. Telstra, Telstra, you do get reception in a lot of places out the bush, so it is a good thing to have for one thing being like Google Maps and navigating where you're going and the other one being obviously you need to call someone. Other than that, I'm just using the the UHF radio and the PLB emergency beacon in a case of an emergency. I don't have a satellite phone or anything like that. Maybe one day, but for the moment I don't really do anything too remote. But if I was to do a remote trip, I would hire one or buy one. There it all is there. That's why I keep on those seat things. Next thing is under the back seat. This is stuff that I never really use, but it's there if I need it. It's not going to be quick to get to. It's not that hard to get to. You pull the things off the back seat, up the back seat comes. Rope. There's a ARB tire repair kit. I've never actually used that. And then I've got a bag of goodies here. We'll go through that out there. Fencing wire. And then over the other side is the scissor jack. I won't get that out. That's just a standard scissor jack that comes with the car. Fencing wire, rope, tire repair kit. It's all in there. And then in this I've got a heap of little things. What have I got here? Uh, radiator stop leak, straps, weld tape, some self-fusing silicon tape just a couple different types of stronger tapes uh, radiator iron oil tank repairs engine components repairing metal and plastic parts it's just like a really strong um, putty type thing and then in here i got some spare utilux clips of all different sizes and then this is the big blue box in the back where i keep a lot of things in here this one's locked up normally with a lock gas cooker camp lights Recovery gear, so snatch strap, winch extension strap, tree trunk protector. After we had to tow Dad out of the Barrington, I got rid of the snatch strap and tree trunk protector. They were pretty worn. That was all ARB gear. That was, that's really good. I've, always, I've used ARB recovery gear. It's been really good. I still got the winch extension strap, but I now have these Hulk, a Hulk snatch strap and a Hulk, Hulk 4x4 tree trunk protector. So that's recovery gear there. Uh, some spare tent pegs in there and rope. Axe. WD-40. There's the cable for my winch. If the Bluetooth doesn't work, you can hook the winch onto the controller. Rag. Some hockey straps. Bottle jack. I did have a high lift jack originally, but they're pain in the ass. They're so heavy, you gotta find somewhere to put them. And when you lift the car, you lift the suspension first. So you have to lift the car a whole lot higher and there's all the dangers with high lift jacks. These bottle jacks are so simple and easy to use. High lift jacks, a bit of work, hard work. This is so easy. You can do it with like one hand reaching under there. It's amazing how they can lift the car with hardly any effort. What size is that? That's a 4,000 kilo one. A snatch, ARB snatch block, pulley block. Some shackles. Some fire starters if it's raining and the wood's all wet. A heap of straps for tying things on the roof. Different sizes, I've got a whole heap here. A saw, hand saw. This is a Ridge Rider air compressor. Bit of a cheapy one, but it's always worked. The only thing is the gauge doesn't work on it. 
but I normally just set, if I'm down to about 16 psi, if I do about a minute 10 on my phone, that gets me up to where I want to be, about 34 psi. Some people will use about 40 psi on their tires on the road. I have mine down a little bit just to make the ride smoother. I know it means they probably will wear a little quicker, but it's, it's so rough when you have them at 40 psi. Newspaper sign the fire, winch dampener. And here's another tool kit. This is a cheapy one, but it has everything in here. You open it up, there's everything in there. All right, I'll put all this down on the mat. Actually, I also get my chainsaw. I normally carry a chainsaw with me too. This lives on my roof. Steel chainsaw in the box there. Main reason for getting firewood and clearing tracks. Nothing worse than driving down and down a track for hours. And there's a tree across that you can't get through that you could have cut if you had a chainsaw. I've got fuel, oil, spark plug, some tools, sharp, sharpening tools, tools for pulling it apart, the actual chainsaw, rags, and then in here, uh, spare chain and spare air filter in there too. That was everything out of that blue box. This is just how I have my car set up all the time, even when I'm not camping. I just keep everything in there mostly. I have, this is all my cooking stuff in here. That's just all cooking stuff. Uh, plates, cutlery, cooking oils. 15 litres of water there. I take away more when I'm going on a trip. That's just what I keep in my car. Now I've got my fridge, which is always running. Even at, even through summer at the moment, it still seems to be going all right off a dual battery system. Keep it parked in the shade, keep the towel across it. And then in the other blue box is where I keep clothes, various things, not really too much in here to do with four wheel driving. Shovel stays up on the roof. That's another tool up there. I think that's everything there that I can think of in my car. I'm trying to think if I keep anything else anywhere. It ends up being a fair bit of stuff. That would be good to, there's always more things I'm thinking of and adding to, but I'm also trying to keep down weight and space. I don't carry, I don't really carry spare parts. Um, number one, I don't have very great mechanical skills in relation to say carrying a spare CV and changing that, anything. Uh, along those lines, I just try and keep my car well serviced and regularly replace parts. All these things I got here, they're all bought with my own money. The only thing it wasn't was these two Hulk straps that were given to me recently, but I haven't actually used them yet, Hulk 4x4, so I'll use them soon and we'll see how they go. I was using all the ARB stuff before, which was really good. Um, I still got some of that with me. So hopefully that gave you a few ideas of, I know people ask me what I keep in my car, what I take. As I said, it's not a perfect list and I'm sure I'm forgetting things. So hopefully people can tell me some important things I can take away with me. Now I've got to repack it all back in. One last thing is spare key. Well, I'm not going to say where that is. <laughs>